What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And I'm back. Feels good, man. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing good. And we're going to get this one. And this one is spicy. Dragon's Dogma 2 is finally out. Came out yesterday. After 12 years. We've got Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh my gosh. This game is incredible. The first game that came out 12 years ago. It was way ahead of its time. That's why I think the game didn't do as well as it should have done. People just weren't ready for that game, man. That game is outstanding. Even to this day, if you go back and play it to the, now, unbelievable. But, we here with Dragon's Dog for 2. And the game has got off to the worst start that you could ever hope for for a video game especially a game like Jacker's Dogma released 12 years ago from Capcom worst case scenario because when it comes to Jacker's Dogma the developers for the actual game they're not social media whores they're not social media clout chasers. They're not going to be on the internet. Social media replying to every single comment. Having interviews with every single media outlet over every little thing. Even when the community does have an issue with their games. They don't address it. They barely address it. And if they do... They might put out like a kind of tone deaf reply. Yeah. Where they're not really addressing it. They're just dancing around it. Yeah. So for a company. Where they just put out a game. An incredible game. And they'll let the community. And the gamers. And the fans just enjoy it. And just talk about it. And spread the love. That's how Dragon's Dogma 2 has got to where it is. It's literally through word of mouth and reputation. From the first game. Because there are millions of people that are going to play Dragon's Dogma 2. That didn't play Dragon's Dogma 1. Because of people like me. Talking about how godlike Dragon's Dogma 1 was. And this is your chance to get in. On the Dragon's Dogma train. Don't miss it. And if you don't play Dragon's Dogma 2. You're missing out. The game is incredible. If you want a power fantasy. A game where you feel like you are an Isekai protagonist. Leveling up. The better you get. The better your combat is. The more powerful and overpowered you feel in the game. Based on the abilities in the game. The smoothness of the combat, the world, the law feels like it's coming at you from all different directions. The world is expansive, it feels like it's an alive, breathing world that exists even without you. Jump on that train now. This is the game that you're getting into. You actually feel powerful in this game. Not, as I said, not just off the abilities of the character, but because the game allows your ability and skill to make you even more powerful. Your movement, the way you know how to do um, combos, damage, your evasive, you know how to attack, you know when to attack, you know the enemy's weaknesses, you just know how to be smooth with it. That's the kind of game Jacker's Dogma M2 is. And they've come off to a bad start with all these macro transactions. 
Now, I feel this is more of a PC player issue on Steam. Because when you play on the PlayStation 5, you're not going to notice the shot, man. I didn't even notice any of these microtransactions that people are talking about until I heard about it, like, yesterday evening. I didn't know a damn thing about it, bro, that people were upset about microtransactions. Because on Steam, when you look at the game, the shop and everything to microtransactions is right there in front of you. Whereas on the PlayStation, you put the disc in, you install the game, the game installs, you switch it on, done. You don't really see the shop. You don't see the microtransactions. That's the reason I feel like it is more of a Steam issue than it is a PlayStation issue. But it's an overall issue. Yeah, let's talk about it. Do I think these microtransactions mean anything? Absolutely not. So I am 13 hours into the game. I have got 2,000... I think it's 2,278. Or, or 87 um, Rift Crystals, which I have got organically from just playing the game. People using my pawn, enemy getting Rift Crystals for it, discovering um, Rifts, and when you open Rifts, you get Rift Crystals, killing monsters at night, like the undead, ghosts, um, all that type of stuff. The, the, the ghouls, the skeletons, the necromancers, all that type of stuff. You just get rift, a lot of rift crystals. Rift crystals are in chests. I've got... So essentially, if you were to do the maths, yeah, I have got about four pounds worth of rift crystals. Yeah, so I'm looking on the shop here on Steam. And to get 2,000... 500 uh, Rift Crystals will cost you £4.45, yeah? And I've got 2,280-something, yeah? So you can say I've got roughly about £4 worth of Rift Crystals in, in, like, 13 hours. And I'm not even paying attention to it. Rift Crystals aren't even a thing. If you hire pawns of your level... They don't cost anything. The cost is zero. It's only if you're going to employ pawns of other people where the level is like way above you. Like 10 levels or 20 levels above you. Then it will cost you something like 300, like 100, 200 or 300 rift crystals. Yeah. Why would you want to employ pawns that are so significantly stronger than you? Unless you're looking to get carried by that pawn. Yeah. That pawn to do all the work for you at a very low level. When you're at a very low level. Yeah. And that's no fun. That literally doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And you could just play the game. Play it for like three or four hours. Do the story. Do little quests. Do some side quests. Do the main story. For like three or four hours. And you will naturally have got like three or four um, hundred... Rift crystals, then you can go and employ like um, a pawn that is 10 levels or 15 levels above you. Even though I don't know why you'd want to do that. Yeah, It's nothing. It's nothing. So that's the reason for me, I feel like it's a non-issue. Rift crystals are all over the place. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is they do have wake stones. Yeah. In the game, wake stones are extraordinarily sparse. Yeah. Now... Jagger's Dogma is a very hard game if you don't engage with the game properly. And it's an easy game and a fun experience if you do engage with the game. What do I mean? If you don't engage, you just want to go straight through the story. You're not trying to level up the characters. You're not trying to put your good equipment on your characters, enhance the equipment. You're not doing side quests. You're not fighting monsters. As I said, you're not leveling up. You're not buying abilities. You're not amassing any anything to grow your character. Then your character is automatically going to be weaker. As you're going through the game, you're fighting harder enemies. You're not really learning your abilities or certain monsters whose you have to fight certain monsters 
maximizing the abilities of your arisen and your pawn. The whole game is structured about you learning the system. So if you're not engaging with the game, you're not really learning the system. You're just kind of like mashing. You're going to have a hard time on the game. And when you have a hard time, you're going to die a lot. And if you die a lot, you're going to need wake stones. That's just how it is. How many wake stones have I used in the game? None. I haven't used any wake stones. Like, why would I use a wake stone? The only time I've died in the game... Is when I've got knocked off a mountain. When I've fought like an ogre. Or a griffin. And they've hit me. And I've fallen off the cliff. And then I've died. That's the only times that I've died. And I have died when I've got low health. Like my life is red. I'm in the middle of night. I've been playing for like 8 or 9 hours. And then. I come across a horde of goblins. And then a Crimea comes at me. And then an ogre comes at me. And I'm just swarmed. My pawns are dead. And I know I have to call it quits here. That's the only situation that I've been in. When I've died. And I've needed a Rift Crystal. But I haven't used it. Because I saved just a couple minutes before that situation. Yeah. And we're going to get onto the saves in a minute. Yeah, and for them to sell wake stones, it's a bad look because it's so obvious they are selling wake m stones to the super ultra casuals of this game that are getting into the game because everyone else is getting into the game, everyone else is hyped for the game, their favorite. Um, social media influencer or content creator is hyped about the game and is endorsing the game and they want to get in on it because their favourite, as I said, content creator or influencer or whatever is saying, this is the game you need to get into. Yeah. But they're not really engaging in the game. They just want to play on it to be in the mix, in the party with everyone else. They know what everyone's talking about. Yeah. So it's a bad look. It's terrible. You shouldn't be doing this type of stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As I said, it's inconsequential if you're engaging with the game. You're never going to need any of this stuff. Yeah. And um, there's another thing where you can buy port crystals that allows you to teleport. And you can put port crystals all over the place. And you can teleport. You can get a port crystal. There are port crystals in the game for you to buy. And find and you get from rewards from doing side missions and story. There is way an, more than enough of the port crystals that you do not need to buy them. You're not going to be putting port crystals here every single step you go. So why are they selling that? It literally makes no sense. You're just making yourselves look bad by putting this type of stuff. It looks like bad faith. But it's a poor bad faith because it... It's irrelevant. Like, why would you ever spend two pounds on a port crystal? Like, it doesn't make any sense, man. It's for the super ultra casual. That will say, how do you equip your weapon? How do you equip armor? That's the casual that this is aimed at. And that is predatory. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a, it's just an all-round bad look. And there are people out there that are like that, yeah? So you have to, so you have to, just because you're not like that, I'm not like that, you know, most people are not like that. I would say, like, maybe 95% of people are not like that. You do have, like, a small percentage of people that are like that, that are going to have the money, or just regardless, just to try to keep up with everybody, talk about the game, have this stuff, so they can keep up. It's a bad look. You know, there's other stuff they sell in the game. Like um, a makeshift um, goa key. Why the hell are they selling a goa key, bro? You get goa keys all over the place. Well, not all over the place. But you get enough of them. And in this game, there is somebody in the game. Yeah, like a um, who deals with the black market. Yeah, black market shop. And he can create forgeries... Of any item. So for example. You could take. 
the goa key that you get from a side quest and give it to him and he can make a forgery of it now you have infinite goa keys but they sell it and i came across that on accident the black market guy he said he makes forgeries i thought hmm here's a goa key because it says that it, will, it could be only used once let me see what happens. He duplicated it. At the minute, I'm sitting on 11 of those um, keys. And it only cost like 100 gil um, for him to do, to make a forgery of it. But he can't duplicate items that have got abilities. So let's say, for example, a wake crystal. Yeah? That resurrects you. He can't duplicate that. He can forge it, duplicate it. For it to look like it, but it can't duplicate the abilities. The ability to resurrect, it can't do. But it can resurrect in terms of the way it looks. So let's say, for example, if you want to duplicate a... As I said, the keys, he could duplicate keys for you. He could duplicate certain items, but not items that have got abilities. So there's a way to have infinite Goa keys. Why are you selling Goa keys, man? It doesn't make any sense. It's so confusing to me. It's just a bad look, man. Terrible bad look. They even sell campsites, um, a camping kit. When you're going throughout the whole world, when you get to a camp in the open world, in the, in the actual camping area, near it, like literally right next to the, around it, somewhere around it, you're going to see a camping kit. There's a camping kit in almost every single camp that you find. And you do side quests. You get camping kit. You loot chests. You loot huts. You go through houses. When you're going through like the world, you ask, excavate um, like rubble. And abandoned... Um, carts and carriages and stuff like that you'll find camping kits they're all over the place you can buy them from shops they're all over the place why are they selling this stuff it just looks bad and now they've created bad press for themselves a disaster this has ruined an incredible launch the launch was going to be incredible this shop this bad faith shop has cost capcom Hundreds of millions. There are millions of people that are not going to buy the game because of the bad press that it's getting now. This is the reason. There was a game that released like a couple weeks ago, Tekken 8. They released the game. Everybody was giving that game praise, man. Because every single fighting game at the moment is just garbage. They're just dropping the board. Mortal Kombat... You name it, man. What come up one? All these other games, they're just dropping the ball. They're not communicating with the community. People are not feeling it. Tekken 8 comes along. Incredible character design. Amazing trailers. Awesome music. Beautiful visuals. Incredible storyline. Fun online play. You can play with your friends. Attention to detail. High quality game. Everyone's going crazy. The game's amazing. But two weeks later, they put DLC into the game where they implement a shop. Where you buy character customizations and character um, outfits. So essentially what they've done is they've monetized godlike potential um, costumes for the characters that are going to be coming into the game. Let's say they do a collaboration with an uh, anime studio. You know, it's um, Namco Bandai. So they have like a lot of anime that they work with. Let's say, for example, they do a, I don't know, a Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah, collaboration with Tekken. That's got to be the Tekken shop, which means you have to pay for it. People are cussing out Namako Bandai because of that. People are pissed and going in on Namako Bandai because of that. And the Tekken developers, even though it's a corporate decision. Yeah. Look at this. Tekken 8. When the game came out. Within the first two weeks. I think it was. 
they announced that the game had sold 2 million. Since that Tekken Shop announcement, the game has not sold another million. So within the first two weeks, it sold 2 million. And then over a month later, it's not sold a million more. It's not got to 3 million copies yet. Now, you know why that is? Because of the bad press from the shop. Because certain characters are way overpowered over other characters. Like when you throw characters in Tekken 8, like the character got froze, yeah? 98% of the cast, yeah? You have to break the throw. If you like press a button, the right button for that person throwing you. Yeah, if they do a right-handed punch, right-handed throw, you have to press the right punch and then it will break out of the right-handed um, throw. If they do a left-handed throw, you have to press the left punch and then it will break out of that throw. You have a two-second window to break that throw. But you have two characters in the game, their break window is half a second. So 98% of the cast... Has got a two second window to break the throw. But you've got two characters where they've got half a second window to break the throw. The throw is literally unbreakable. You cannot see it unless you're already pressing the punch button that they have do that are doing. Or you definitely know they're going to throw. So you are preemptively pressing the right punch to break out of the throw. It literally doesn't make any sense. So that's why I'm going say there's imbalance where you've got some characters that have got an exploit in the system which makes the game imbalanced. And people are pissed about that. And then you have some issues with the online and then people that are rage quitting in the game. And then the Namco Bandai, the developers are not in initiating any type of punishment for people that rage quit. So it's got a lot of bad press. And that has halted the colossal sales that that game was having. Right now, Tekken 8, if you think about it, that game should be on 5 million sales at least. It's not even at 3 million because of the bad press. Jacker's Dogma, on release, initiated that shop. They've immediately stopped people from getting into that game. This is catastrophic. But... I do feel the game can recover. Why do I think it will recover? Because the game is incredible. Oh my gosh, bro. Let me tell you a story. This morning, playing Jagger's Dogma, went to bed at like 3 a.m. It's Saturday. Well, it's Friday evening. Yeah, today's Saturday. Was going through the world. Playing for about nine hours. Oh, let me talk about the save before I do that, yeah? You have... This is the issue that I do have. The save option is garbage. They need to fix that immediately. ASAP. Who thought of that? The game's got one save slot. It doesn't make any sense. And that so your save, that you manually save, can be overwritten... By an autosave. What? I don't understand. I literally don't understand. So essentially. I'm going to fight a boss. Just before I'm going to fight the boss. I make a save. Then I fight the boss. I make a mistake. Because I don't understand what the boss is doing. I waste some items. The game auto saves me. While I'm in the fight. Like, basically, let's say, for example, I do the first part, but I didn't do it good. Then I have to go to the next stage to fight the boss. The game auto-saves. When I reload, because, you know, I made some errors, I feel I could do it better. It's already auto-saved me after the first section of the boss fight. There is no alternative for me to go back to the save that I did before the boss fight started. Auto-saves over it. And there's another save which you save at your inn. Which is useless. If you're playing Jagger's Dogma, it's so easy to get caught up in that game. You can go out into the open world and you can be fighting monsters, demons. As I say, Crimea, griffins, dragons, 
Saurians, goblins, goblin champions, all manner of demons, necromancers, skeleton armies, you name it. You just fight in the most incredible, epic fantasy adventure monsters in gaming history. It's incredible. You're going to be fighting for like six or seven hours. You're not even going to notice it. When you left the inn that you made the save, you're like level 17. Within six hours of just going through just mad hardship and crazy all out reign of terror in the world, you've got to level 22. You've been going in. What good is that in save? You've just leveled up. You've gone, you basically, you've gone up like five levels. Hardship. You've got so many items. You've just beaten a dragon. You've got a rare item from that jab dragon, the tough fight. What good is that in save now? Let me tell you what happened to me. I was playing the game when the game came out. First of all, I was playing for like about nine hours. And I came to a situation where there was a chest. It was so obvious it was a setup. Yeah, but whatever, man. I went to the chest, opened the chest, got a cloak, a slime came out. Yeah, sure, of course. Turned around and I saw another slime coming from behind. You know what? I was like, I'm not even dealing with this. I'm out. So I got past the slimes and kept running. All good. All I hear is, oh, I'm like, are you joking? <laughs> By this time, I, I said, I've been playing for like nine hours. Yeah. I had gone through two day and night cycles and two days and three night cycles. You play Jugger's Dogma, you know what that means. Yeah. I hadn't gone to an inn. I hadn't rested at a camp. Nothing. My life was actually flashing red. My life could not... Because every time you get into an encounter, you take damage. Your maximum life bar goes down. So let's say, for example, when you first are fresh, your life is like 200 points. If you've been playing for a long time, you've been getting hit a lot. And you're just going through the world. And you're, and you're, revive, you're healing yourself and everything like that. Your maximum health that you can heal to will be about maybe 30 or 40. And that's your max health. Which means you could get one shot. It's fine. It's fine. I was in it. I was in the zone. I was just enjoying it. I felt like an a, a Isekai protagonist. Wolves coming at me. I don't even care. I'm out. I'm running. And all of a sudden. A goblin. Jumps out of the. Woods. And hits me. Are you joking me? And almost kills me. Yeah. But I managed to like quickly go to the menu and heal. I'm like you're joking. Now I can't do anything. Because you've got wolves that are leaping at me. Leaping at my half dead pawns. And I've got these slimes that are still chasing me from far away. Like how are you chasing me from so far away? Okay. But I'm still running. I'm not even trying to engage in any of it. Yeah, keep getting hit by the walls because the walls move faster than me. Yeah. And then the area goes dark. And I'm thinking, did they just get night immediately? But then I look at the rocks and it's daytime. And I think to myself, oh no. Oh no. And then when I look, the outline of the shadow looks like a wing. It's a griffin. And then a griffin swoops down and then just lands. And it sends my character flying some type of mad stun animation. So why the hell is a griffin randomly coming out of nowhere? Where were you four minutes ago? Where were you an hour ago? Where were you 
All that eight to nine hours ago, where were you? Now that I'm, my life is low, I've literally got like 5% health. My pawns are on the verge of death. Now I've gotten been chased by slimes, goblins, dire wolves, and now I've got this giant griffin that is doing wind effects that is stopping me from moving. I know I'm dead at this point, yeah? This is all this morning, by the way. I haven't I haven't been to an inn or anything like that. I can't save. Because when you're in battle, you can't save. Now I'm really in jeopardy right now. Whatever. I'm still trying to run. And then my poor dies. Now I have to go back through this hell. Try to still dodge these monsters. All the stun effects that is happening. And save my pawn. I go to pick up my stone. There's a minotaur. There's a goddamn minotaur. That is chasing after my pawns. And chasing after me now. So now I've got two slimes. I've got a pack of dire wolves. Like six or seven dire wolves. I've got um, a griffin. And I've got goblins. All fucking engulfing me. And it's getting night time. You are got to be joking me right now. By some miracle of the world, I managed to save my pawn. Yeah. Then buffaloes, buffaloes start charging at me. The most passive enemies in the game that don't do anything are charging at me. I'm blocking my vision so I can't see a damn thing. I'm so confused. I'm baffled. Why is buffaloes... So many buffaloes, there was like at least like 9 or 10 of them. I'd say like maybe 10, 11 of them. There was a lot. So many I couldn't even see. I couldn't even run past them because they were like blocking my way. I'm like, okay, so the game is the game wants me dead. That's what that's what really is going on right now. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to die. No healing items. I'm done. So I press pause. Go to quit. Go to main menu. You know what? I'm not dealing with any of this stuff. If I've got to die, I'll die by my own hand. I ain't die by these jabronis. Yeah? These bozos. Now, when I went to the main menu, I've got a little bit of drift on this pad. Yeah? I need to buy a new pad already. Yeah? Drift is when it goes down on its own automatically or goes to the side. Yeah, the stick is just stuck to the going that way or this way or up or down. When I press the button, I must have double pressed it. Yeah, because I pressed it and it looked like nothing happened and I pressed it again. But the first press had already activated. It just had a little bit of delay. And then it just literally went straight to load. Okay. It loaded me back to level 3 at the beginning of the game. Because that is where I had last gone into an inn. So the drift had made my stick go down to the last save at the inn. And I'd loaded that. And in doing it, it immediately overwrites your main save. So I literally lost 9 hours... Of epic gameplay, even though I was like only level, I only got to like level twelve, yeah. But I did a lot. That that was a whole day's play down the in the bin, yeah. Because there's only two save options: a main save, which can be overwritten by auto save, and your last save at your inn. And if you got like, if you make an, even a little bit of a mistake. And you press the in save. You overwrite your main save. All your data's gone. All my whole a whole day's gameplay gone. There is not a word to describe the rage and anger and sadness and despair I felt when I saw that. Capcom, fix that. Fix that. Sorry for the long-winded story, but I needed to tell that story in order for you to understand my divine sadness and misery and sadness when that happened. That's the reason I am so 
pissed. the save like the save is really bad that's the one thing they need to fix multiple save slots capcom execute immediately immediately man like one save slot whose idea was that fix that fix that that is terrible terrible but yeah so in, in summary um all the microtransactions and this shop it's a catastrophic issue, man. It's it's a catastrophic um, PR move that has cost them hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. Easily. Right? But they can regain it simply because the game is incredible. It's an amazing game. You will play this game. Within one hour, your mind will just be blown by how incredible this game is. You'll feel it immediately within seconds of playing the game. But it's only after you get into the open world and you just make your, you reunite with your pawn and you just feel the world just, it's like the abyss opens up and you look into the abyss and the abyss looks back. But it's not an evil abyss looking back at you. It's an abyss of infinite wonder and beauty and just wonder that just awaits. And it is just unbelievable. Yeah. And that's the reason I feel like this game can recover. Because people are going to play this game. People are going to play the game. Content creators are going to play the game. No one's going to have a bad word to say about the game. Outside of the microtransactions. The shop. Which you don't need to engage in. Everything that is in the shop. The Rift Crystals, the Camping Set, um, the Wake Stones, everything. You can get a lot of this stuff, quite a bit of it, within the first two to three hours of playing the game. You will get more Rift Crystals in four hours than you can buy. 2,500 um, Rift Crystals for four, um, for four pounds. Uh, for £4.45 pence, which I think is about £4 pounds for USD. Yeah. You get that in four or five hours of play. Camping kit. That's all over the place. Um port crystal. Yeah, you do have to do like more into the game to get port crystals, yeah. But port crystals is not that important when you're early on in the game because your world does not open up that much. You're still enjoying the wonder of the game. By the time you've expanded your search of the game, you'll be able to get um, port crystals from missions. You'll be able to buy them. They'll literally be all over the place. So it's not an issue when it comes to port crystals. And by the way, port crystals are not one-time use. You can use it to put in an area that you want to come back to and teleport to. And then once you've um, got everything you want from that area, you can take back your port crystal and then reuse it somewhere else. Yeah, so you only ever will need maybe one, maybe two or three, which is why it's super excessive for no reason. You're not going to be teleporting over all over the place anyway. This game is not that type of a game. Yeah. The Wake Stones. Let's be honest. After you've played the game for about. I'll say about 10 hours. The chances of you dying. Is minimal. It's. I would say there's like a. 5% chance that you're going to die. After you've been playing the game for like 10-15 hours. Yeah. If you've been engaging the game properly. Playing the game. Leveling up your character. Getting equipment, decent equipment on the character, enhancing that equipment and having a good pawn um, team, like a good diverse pawn on your uh, pawns on your team. You know, maybe have a fighter, a mage, a wizard, something like that, or a warrior, or a mage, a thief. As long as you've got a nice mix of characters that cover each other's weaknesses. You really are not going to die in that game. This is not the type of game where you die a lot. Unless you are super ultra casual and you don't even know how to equip a sword. Or you don't know how to equip an accessory. Yeah. Then you would need it and then it's predatory. And it's all just bad faith. 
yeah. And um, the keys, I don't even understand why the um, keys are there. The keys you get, find them all over the place. And as I say, if you want to have them in access, which you don't need to have them in access, you can find the black market dealer and you can actually duplicate the keys. Like, it's all just nonsense, man. And camping kit, camping kits all over the place, yeah. So it's, it's a non-issue. I don't know why people are complaining about it. But also, the fact that Capcom have put that in the game is so stupid. It's like, why would you put that? It's so bad faith. It looks it's predatory, it's unnecessary, and it looks like you're made to get, making the game difficult, and you make wake stones very sparse, just so you can sell it. You make camping kits. There's not an abundance of camping kits, because if people want to keep on camping non-stop, like every 10 to 15 minutes, you know, once their health is a little bit low, just for reassurance, they want to go to the camping and just revitalise everybody. You can do that. You can buy it. It's a bad look. It's very predatory. And they've done this in Devil May Cry. It's unnecessary. They did this in Resident Evil 4. It's unnecessary. Why is this nonsense even in there? Right? It's, I mean, as I said, everything that's in the shop is garbage. It's not worth... None, nothing in the shop is worth 10 pence. 10 cents. A dime. Not any of it. Everything that you can, that is in the shop, you can get within two to... And you'll have quite a bit of them. Yeah? Within the first two hours of playing the game. I'm baffled. I'm baffled. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm baffled by the outrage. I think it's way overblown outrage. And I'm baffled by the stupidity of Capcom. But it's not the developers, because this is clearly a corporate decision. The developers have done their job. They've made an incredible game. But the corporates, the people at the top, the marketing... The executives have made these decisions. They didn't make it egregious. Like, you know, you can't buy levels and stuff like that. And you can't buy, like, the most powerfulest weapon in the game and stuff like that. But the fact that it's just there is just so silly, man. For a single player game like this, where once you've hit a certain skill, um, a skill level, the chance of you dying is like literally one percent. It's you getting fighting. It's you fighting a powerful monster, and then your stamina is low. You get hit and you fall off a mountain, or you get hit with an instant death attack, and you don't have an accessory that protects you against instant death. But by that time, you probably would have saved before that encounter. That's my thoughts on. Mon um, I said Monster Hunter. <laughs> I got Monster Hunter on the brain. In terms of Dragon's Dogma. I think the game is absolutely incredible. I am losing myself in the game. It is so fun. I do think the game will recover from this. Because I said the game is so good. Anybody that plays this game. I promise you. You will love the game. Everything about it is just outstanding the music the epicness the power fantasy you feel like an isekai character the abilities the moves the pawns are funny the adventure the story the characters the world the lore the weather the day and night cycles the monsters you fight you fight chimeras you fight dragons you fight drakes you fight worms you fight all types of crazy monsters that are just out of like a Fantasy, RPG, MMO, epic adventure, just world of fantasy is in this game. If you want a game that you'll lose yourself in and just have an incredible time, it's Jacker's Dogma 2. 100%. So yeah, Warriors, that's all I wanted to say about the crazy, catastrophic launch for Jacker's Dogma. Oh, I don't even believe it. 
Why would they do that? Why would they launch this shop in the first place? And this shows you, this is why Namco Bandai did not launch their game with any shop or microtransactions. They waited two weeks before they put that content into the game. Because, and the thing is about, I'll say something about Tekken. There's this thing called Tekken coin, which is the microtransaction currency. When you buy that currency from the PlayStation Store, the size of the file is zero kilobytes because it's all in the game. It's just a code. There is no DLC. It's all in the game. That is how shady Tekken 8 microtransaction and the shop is. Yeah. That's the reason they cut out of the game. And Capcom, they just came up the, get, the gate. They were extremely honest with it. The fact they didn't hide it and put it in later. But they were extremely deceptive and bad faith by putting such a stupid thing in the game in the first place. I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, that's what I think. I'm going to be playing some Monster Hunter. If, you, if you've got this far... Thank you, appreciate you. I know I've ranted on quite a little bit. Yeah, but you know, I like to talk. And I, I think I'm going to stream um, Dragon's Dogma 2 just a little bit. Me going, I'm just going to be going through the world. I'm not going to be doing story. And you can just see my experience of the game. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that today. Well, today as in the 23rd of March, Saturday. The day after the launch, because it launched yesterday. From when this video was made live, yeah. And um yeah, comment, subscribe, share, let me know your thoughts and um warriors. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Laters.